Hello everybody, welcome to the George Wormel Railway, my name is John Wormel, today looking at my two A4s I've got. First one here is a Backman Golden Eagle, lovely engine. One thing I will say about these ones though, they don't like going around tight curves. I will warn you, if you buy one of these, don't use it on a tight curve, it won't make it, trust me. Luckily it will do me outside curve on my layout on a 10B8. But they really do struggle on the tight bends. Next, we have some coaches I got from the car boot sale, believe it or not. Here's some Anniar, I think the Grizzly ones. Got all these from the car boot sale, my local one. And they look pretty damn good. These will be lit and populated as soon as possible. In fact, I might start them today. <laughs> I know some may be the same numbers, but who cares? I like them. <laughs> the second one is my late grandfather's engine, uh, Seagull. Um, I, I don't know how long he had it before I took it over. Um, but he's one of his first engines that he, he had on his layout. Yeah, God rest his soul. This is the main reason why I actually made the George Wormel Railway, was in memory of him. He was a very, very brave man. Um, served out in Tobruk as a desert rat. And also liberated some of the um, horrible death camps out in Germany. So, you know, an incredible brave man. And I respect him, you know. And I really do miss him. So I've done this layout in memory of him. So he's one of his locos here. Uh, so I will be doing up in the next couple of weeks. I only run these every now and again because, you know, I mean, I know they're available all over the place, but to me, this is an irreplaceable loco. You know, it's part it's part of him. So I will be, you know, treating this one with extreme respect. Even though it is just a standard, you know, Hornby engine, to me it's a lot more. So I will run this very, very rarely. And I have got some old trying ones that he had. And I must admit, I mean, the triangle ones, yes, they're not as detailed. But I tell you what, they can have pull. <laughs> they can drag anything than damn things can. Oh, look at that. Look at that. A bit of polystyrene there. <laughs> but these engines here, these are absolutely gorgeous. You know, back when they're absolutely the biz on these. But I must admit, I mean, everybody says, oh, my God, it's John on about Hornby again. Oh, no, doom and gloom. I've just bought a new Hornby engine. Yeah, shock horror. I'll now have another new Hornby engine, which I'll be showing in a second, in the second part of this video. It's an absolute peach of a loco. Only one thing I don't like about it is the actual box. It's a pain to get into. Oh, bit of free train spotting time again. 66 going through. <laughs> right, I'm back in a sec with the new um, engine. So hold on and I'll get the second part of this video done. Welcome back to part two of the George Wimmer Railway. Quick look at my um, new engines. Right, here we have a few little bits and bobs here. I've not, I don't think I've shown these on the, on the, on the layout before. So the brake band there, the Great Western type. And now we've got some furniture bands. LMS one there. Removals and warehousing. Yeah, broken coupling. <laughs> Shock horror. Get that done. Great Western one there. And another one there. More importantly, is the new engine, and here she is. It's a Hornby, and it's a whole class, and a really nice engine, I must admit, and really, really nice engine. Goes like the clappers on the test track, anyway. So, but yeah, it's a real nice one. A bit light in this part, though, but we'll soon stuff that out. There'll be a weight in there, but yeah, a really nice engine. I think Hornby are finally getting their niche now. You can see here. Yeah, a lot of detail in this one. It really, really is a nice engine, I've got to be honest. It's DCC ready, but I won't be using that because I'm more analogue on my layouts. Because uh, basically, I said I couldn't afford to get them all done by DCC. It cost me a fortune, you know, with 400 engines, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. So, but yeah, a nice, nice engine. Adley Hall, very nice. 
we'll be getting some more throughout the year as you can probably guess as of when but i will tell you one thing though my life almighty the get this out of the box was a nightmare the bloke had to show me how to get this out of the box without damaging it i'll show you a second as you can see here that's the box yeah now there's another plastic thing inside here and then the loco and trust me it's tight in there without the plastic thing that actually sits inside there it, it was a real pain to get out it took us over 15 minutes to ease the loco out of the box without damaging it from the shop he was not a happy man he was not happy i must admit he was um he said like he's had a lot of trouble with this and, and has even damaged one or two engines trying to show them customers because they wouldn't come out of these boxes yeah it's um so you know very nice of him to warn me about that and to take the, pl the plastic out and just to shave this box a little bit just to give yourself some movement on it so do be warned if you buy these types of ones railroad be careful when you take them out that plastic you could really severely damage your engine but so I'd like to thank the Boughton on the Water staff for telling me about this because I could have actually very easily damaged a brand new engine without even realising it because you have to push them through these two holes there. I mean, it's so daft. I mean, let me just show you this other one, which I found a lot easier. Again, it's a Hornby one. And it's this one here. Now, this one is far better. There you go. All you do is push this piece out here. Ooh. There it is. Push that piece out there. And that middle bit there folds out. And out pops your loco. No damage. Simple to put away. Job good. Yeah, why on earth did they not stick with that design? It's brilliant. But these and this effort as well. It's just damn right dangerous. It really is. I've got to be very careful putting that engine back into here now, I must admit. So, if you buy these ones, buy beware. Take that plastic piece out of that. And just keep your top piece just for, um, you know, keep keeping the dust off the engine. But don't put anything else in there. Because you'll have a hell of a job getting it out. As I say, 15 minutes to get that loco out. The pair of us trying to push through here and ease the loco. by trying to hold it on the main frame to put it out it doesn't come out in two pieces it just comes out in one piece because the tenders putting me putting me um, connected to it so be oh, careful be so careful with that anyway we conclude this video now i uh, hope to have some more later on so stick around with the george wormel railway i'll be back later with some more videos hopefully some more bits and bobs so back in a sec ta-da hi folks welcome back to the george wormel railway Today I'm going to look at some of the wagons I've got. Now, obviously, as you all know, I'm big into the Great Western. But getting some of the stock uh, can be quite expensive. So, we've got here some of these wagons here. You know, they're about £10 a piece. Some of these can be you know, quite shockingly expensive nowadays. But, these things from Hornby, you can pick up pennies. So, how to turn that into something like that. It's quite easy. You need this. Rover Tempest Grey. It's about the closest colour I can find to the old Great Western. And that's what it looks like. Just a car spray. And it doesn't look too bad. As you can see here, look. Once I get all the transfers, I'm going to make sure they are actually near enough to the model I'm trying to do. They don't look too bad, do they? That is our old Hornby. I think it was a Kit Kat van. I think it was. I think that was a Kit Kat van. Like one of these. What a difference. Look at that. From Mr. Fish Fingers. Bit of spray. Finished article. It ain't bad, is it? You want to save a bit of, a bit of cash? You can pick these up from car boot sales or fairs. 
you know, less than a pound, you know, you know pound, two pound. You know, some children probably use, use them in a train set or something. You know, some even come in our steel wheels, look. What you got to do, take the body off on the bottom. It just pops off. Bit of spray with that Tempest Grey. And then, you know, get some of the little transfers which are easily got off either eBay or, you know, one of the model shops still about. And away you go. You've got yourself a nice little wagon. You don't have to be an, an expert to do it. And away you go. Yeah, you save yourself a lot of a lot of cash. A little bit of the weathering here and there, and it's uh, yeah, they won't look too bad, will they? Nice line of them. Look bloody lovely. I think all these cost me four pounds. I think it was four, four or five, four or five pounds for these. And these will all be turned into these wagons here. Also, I'm doing some of these already. These are the ones that I'm working already. These are these uh, so dapple ones I've got. There's about 30 of them, which are the old car transporters. But these ones I don't have many at all. So I was looking around. I was trying to find something that's close enough to it I could find. Because these are obviously, you know, main line. So they are still very expensive. You can see them, but they're about Still come out about five or six pound a piece they do. So I've had a look around, keep looking around for bits and bobs like keep finding these types of ones. Which I know from the ends they don't quite look right, but from the sides, you know, they're pretty close. So for me for me, I'm not doing it exactly accurate as possible, you know, I'm not that top top person. I just like to enjoy trains. You know, I'm not to oh we that lock or that needs another plank on there or that type of person. I'm not that. I like to just enjoy an engine that's putting some stock around a layout. And, you know, for the price of this, I can get probably six of these done for the same price as one of them. Which ain't bad, is it? <laughs> so if you ever got any of these old ones that are tarnished on the roof, there, there's some tarnishing already happening on there. Just give them a quick spray with some Halfords Tempest Grey Rover. And away you go. You've got yourself a great western liveried little box van. And so we'll be doing some more of these as, a, as and when. It's just nice that the old westerns seem to all use the same colour, <laughs> which is wonderful. <laughs> well, a lot of variants on some of their, on their greys, but that's about the closest I can find to it was, it was the Tempest Grey. So you find this a bit helpful if you've got a lot of these little ones knocking around, so you don't know what, what to do with them. You know, just give them a quick spray and uh, say these little wagons and put them on your layout. And the one of the mainline ones there again. I say, like these do command a lot of money still, even though these from like the 1970s still command lots and lots of cash. So, you know, keep your eyes open, find some of these for little monies, bit of spray. I mean, this is a, an old, uh, I'm damn sure this is an old Kit Kat one of Hornby's. Get a quick spray, and then you find out which ones it's closest to, either a fruit van or whatever. Find the labels, stick them on the side there. Bingo. You've got yourself a nice little box van of the Great Western Railway. Well, it just helps anyway. It's a, it, I know there's not 100% accurate, I know that. But, you know, it, it doesn't take much of the imagination to say, oh, well, you know, from a distance, that and that doesn't look very different, does it? So I'll do that. Save yourself some pennies. Save save these old wagons from a fate worse than the toy, the toy box. And bang them on your layout. I think I've converted a lot of these now. There's um, a lot of these knocking around. Well, I think it's all the Kit Kat ones. Um, there's the bird's eye and a lot, a lot of the tango ones and stuff that this is stuff that you dump into a train set anyway. So grab those and save yourself some pennies. Okay, this is me, John Wemmel, saying goodbye for now. And I'll see you later. To do for now. Bye bye.